as a medical oncologist and um, someone who's particularly interested in screening and prevention, it's extremely important to analyze factors that might raise one's risk of developing breast and or ovarian cancer. Those factors include things like the family history of uh, these kinds of tumors, sometimes other tumors as well. So it's important to make sure that you, when you think about your family history, it's not just limited to cancer, it's not just limited to breast and ovarian cancer, but you give a very thorough, as best you can, history to your doctor when you're discussing this of all the diseases in the family that might impact on your risk for breast and ovarian cancer. So family history is important. By the same token, ancestry is important. Where your ancestors were born and came from, on both your mother's and your father's side. This is the situation where the father is absolutely as important as the mother. So when you think about family history, um, you need to think about your father's side as well as your mother's side and where all of these people came from because certain genes uh, and gene pools are enriched in certain populations. So that helps us a lot in understanding what your own particular individual gene pool may be. Then there are issues that are important for the individual woman, such as her own personal hormonal history. Um, breast cancer is basically an estrogen-driven tumor. It's why you tend to see breast cancer much more prevalently in the female population than the male. It's not exclusively in the female population. Men can get breast cancer. Men have estrogens, just as women have testosterone, but the balance is very different. So you tend to see much more breast cancer in women. It's important to analyze the woman's own personal hormonal history. How long has that woman's breast been exposed to the cycling of estrogen that takes place during the monthly cycle? So for instance, if you have a woman who has had the onset of her menses. She got her period at a very young age, eight or nine, let's say. And um, she has not had any children. She has n had no pregnancies. She has done no breastfeeding. And she has a rather late menopause. Now, I'm describing an extreme to make the point. A rather late menopause, maybe in her 50s, her late 50s. Compare the number of months that that woman's breast has been exposed to cycling, cycling estrogen, uh, compared to, let's say, a woman who develops her period, the onset is age 16 or so, she has four or five children, she breastfeeds each child for six to nine months. Remember, during that time of pregnancy, during that time of breastfeeding, the breast is not exposed to cycling estrogen, and then let's say she undergoes menopause at the age of 47. Well, that woman's breast has been exposed relatively much less to this cycle of uh, monthly estrogen and estradiol, which acts on the breast cells. So her hormonal history, her family history, her ancestry, in addition, her own breast history is quite important. 